and thy ship unto the other side. Much people gathered unto him, and he was not unto the sea. And behold, there come one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. And he saw him greatly, saying, My little daughter lying at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged along, killed him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physical conditions, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his God. For she said, if, my, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straight away the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she had healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned about in the press and said, what touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thrown in thee, and says thou, Who touched me? I read in the hearings Mark 5, verses 21 through 31. The God's words, the God's people have already been blessed.
power of touch. We live in what is probably called now a touch averse culture. Avoid touching people, stay away from me, don't get close to me, and definitely don't get in a crowd. Particularly over the past four years, previous four years, it's been a political hotbed that we must be careful who we touch, how we touch, and when we touch. And don't mention grab. You get that when you get home. We become reluctant to get close to people. Stay your distance. We have learned to socially distance ourselves, avoiding getting close, not only because of the pandemic, but also avoidance of handshakes and hand on the backs. Be careful who you touch. You don't believe me? Ask Joe Biden. That was one of the political hot days for him. Your love to touch. We realize that improper touch may cause harm. We have made and make moves to protect ourselves and those who we care about from the touch so that there will be less catastrophic consequences. You may find yourself in a courtroom if you touch somebody. You may find yourself punched in the nose if you touch somebody. You may find some right words if you touch somebody. And you may even be facing accusations based upon your touch. There are strong boundaries around appropriate use of touch. And this is a good thing because we need to feel safe. We need to feel safe in church, that no one's going to touch you the wrong way. We need to feel safe in your workplace, where you don't have to be grabbed the wrong way. You need to feel safe in crowds and the malls the way you go, so therefore you stay your distance. And you learn quickly to self-police your hands. Keep your hands. To yourself. Stay your distance at least six feet apart. A safe touch, however, does not mean a mean touch. Touch is fundamental to the human experience. But what's the largest organ in your body? Your skin. It is most likely no accident that lack of connection, either emotional or physical, is discussed in terms of touch. What do you mean, preacher? The power of touch is profound. It's gentle hold from someone else, a reassuring squeeze of the hand. It can strengthen connections. It can heal your body. Communicate without words or showing someone that you're there with them and for them and that things are going to get better, be better, and will be okay with the right touch. A touch, a proper touch, can bring people together. Proper touch communicates compassion and make people nicer. It reduces stress and influence and even soothe the moment. The proper touch. What do you mean, preacher? Studies have shown a baby's first experience with the surrounding environment occurs through touch. When you were born, the first thing they did was place you on your mama's bed. Developing prenatally even uh, as early as 16 weeks, the power of touch can give life to children. And this sense is essential to children's growth of physical ability. When a child is not touched, they have language issues. When 
a child is not touched, they have cognitive issues. When a child has not been touched and hugged, they have social and emotional competency issues. And likewise, we as adults, sometimes we need to be touched. I'm reminded of that as a husband. Sometimes I just want to hold your hand. Come on now. Sometimes I just need a Sometimes I just need to be touched. As a man, I'm, I'm, I'm currently in the process of changing positions. Recently, I went to the doctor for my annual checkup. And I was disappointed by the doctor's treatment. I waited 30 minutes in his office. And he spent about seven minutes with me. Mm -hmm. He just looked at my blood test, my blood exams, gave me the results of my blood exam, but he never In many ways, the physical exam and the power of touch is about communicating. Y'all get that with me in the moment. You, you, you see where I'm going. It's communicating from the patient to the physician that my abnormality, if there is one, and this is what my body is sharing with you when you touch me. The communication goes in the other direction as well. Communicating from the provider to the patient. Your concerns matter to me. When, when I got home, I said, this doctor really does not care. Because he didn't touch me. He didn't spend time with me. He'll, he just said, your, your numbers look good, but he never put the stethoscope on my heart. He never put, a, put the tongue down my throat. He never even held my hand or put his hand on my back. He never felt my heart. He never felt my knees. And yet, something's wrong when you go to a doctor and they can't touch you. You know, I'm one of those people, you know, I got good insurance, I'm paying you my copay, you ought to at least spend a little time and touch me and tell me what the problem is. <laughs> got home, the next week I called another doctor, so they asked the phone and said, look, I'm looking for a doctor. So you all said, yes I do. But I want somebody who's going to take time with me. I want somebody who cares about me as a person and communicate to me Somebody will at least go put their hands on me. Yeah. Touch! Yeah. Yeah. It communicates a deeper meaning, which is, I am in communion with you. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a ritual. Yeah. Where you're going, Richard? May I introduce you <laughs> to a doctor yeah. 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 who's willing to touch? Because Princeton, I can stop right there. Come here, let me tell you some stories. In, in, in our stories of the morning, the focus around Jesus, the focus is about faith. But also, the focus is about touch. Mm -hmm. uh, these two stories that we read this morning, they're interwoven in Mark. And, 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 and they are not there by accident. Um, the, the, the redactors probably say that uh, the, the story of the woman with the issue of blood is placed in the middle of the story of a man and his dog. That was redacted. That means that was put there not by accident, but to tell a story about who Jesus is and the power of touch. Uh, what happens, preacher? The, the story is interwoven about a man named Jairus who, who Jesus, after crossing the lake from on the other side over there, comes uh, uh, across the lake and is met by the synagogue man, this, the, 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 this, this president of the synagogue, and, and requesting Jesus to come and touch his door. Come lay hands on her. And, and the story of a woman with an issue of love. Uh, uh, and, and, and to come and, and, and so she can make her way through the crowds and she says if I could just get myself through the crowds if I could just touch the hem of his garment I know that I can be made whole 
Yes, the stories are not haphazardly interwoven. However, they are meticulous placed there for a reason. And the characters are juxtaposed and compared one to the other. What do you mean, Smith? Although the two characters are very different within the community, yet they have something very common in nature. First, what are the differences? Look at this. There's a difference between this man and this woman. The man, a religious ruler, a leader within his community, has a place in the church, an interpreter of the law, an upstanding citizen in the community, and obviously well-educated. He has matriculated in the finest of Jewish schools and studied religiously. He has a particular political influence and his opinions and thoughts were well respected. Persons listen to his recommendations. The woman is very different. We don't know her name. She has suffered for quite some time with some issues. Uh, we know that as an issue of blood. But may I pause that for a moment? She has some issues. Or she had one particular issue. And that's what the young folks say a long time ago. She got issues. <laughs> whole lot of us got some issues. The, the bleeding was associated with sin. And she was considered to be unclean. Now ostracized by the community, she had to live on the other side of town. She could not attend a local synagogue because nobody wanted to touch her. Her opinions and political influence within the community mattered very little. As a matter of fact, she could not have even have an opinion, nor could she make any sort of recommendations because she was being perceived as being a sinner. She, you see, was not even mentioned as a leader within her local community. There are other differences. What do we have in common? Yeah. Both found themselves in a desperate situation. Yeah. Two of them had to reach their limits. Mm -hmm. Jairus had a sick child, his daughter. The woman was sick herself. Both have obviously spent all that they had trying to find some sort of relief. Yeah. The woman has spent all that she had going from doctor to doctor. Notice under the doctor's care under the doctor's care with no relief at all. Uh, she had been on all sorts of treatments and nothing seemed to work. The Jewish leader, it is stated, but obviously being a man in the position, he was all, had all sorts of doctors at his uh, availability and was trying to heal his daughter. She continues to get worse. As a matter of fact, they even told Jesus and Jairus when the time came, don't you bother coming this way, she's already dead. Both of them had tried all that they could within their personal limits. Nothing seemed to work. They were in a desperate situation. Mm -hmm. They uh -huh, hear about this man named Jesus. Uh, both of them needed a doctor. <laughs> the two different people who had reached their personal limits find themselves in the same situation. Yeah. So we come to discover human achievements have limits. Yeah. We come to discover regardless of how much money you have, you have limits. Yeah. We come to discover that regardless of how many doctors you've been to, yeah. doctors have limits. Yeah. Come to discover whether you're rich, poor, black, or white, live on this side of town or that side of town. Whether you're in the community that people recognize you or whether people don't recognize you. Whether you're a politician, preacher, or teacher, you're a dope addict, drug addict, or prostitute. It don't matter. Sometime in your life, everybody gonna need Jesus. Uh -huh. I don't care whether you live in the West End, South Side, Other Side, Church Hill, or No Hill. Sometime in your life, you gonna need Jesus as your doctor. Just as me, why? Because I believe there's a doctor in the house this morning. Amen. All of us can relate to both of the characters. What do you mean, preacher? Either we have a loved one who is in need, yeah. or you in need yourself. <laughs> How many of us know somebody that needs Jesus this morning? How many of us know somebody that we want Jesus?
Jesus to come back and lay his hands on us. The your child please Jesus? Is your child strung out up and down? Does your child have problems? Does your mama, does your daddy, does your sister or your brother? And you've done all that you can do for the one that you love. You put them in school. You put the bell bars. You got them out of jail. You got lawyers and doctors. They've been in rehab centers. They're another kind of center. But they need Jesus this morning. Uh-huh. You try therapy, counseling, we teach center, and every sort of thing else. <sighs> we put up your home for a collapse. Yeah. Co-sign for loans. Yeah. Pay for the loan. Yeah. Put insurance on the car. Yeah. Put tires on the car. <laughs> Gave them a job. What you need is Jesus. You need a doctor. How many of us each and every day wake up individually have to cope with something, an issue in our lives? <laughs> Come on now. I, I, I'm just raising my hand. You ain't got to raise yours. But I got some issues. In the morning I wake up, I got something I got to deal with. What you got to deal with, Smith, ain't none of your business. That's between me and Jesus. Okay, can I be real for a moment? Every morning I wake up, I got a little pain in my right knee. Every morning I wake up, I got some issues that I can't discuss with my wife, but I got to have a little talk with Jesus. Every morning, I got some stuff going on. As a matter of fact, before the day is over, I probably picked up a few more issues that I should have left where I should have left them. I got some issues that I'm dealing with. Walgreens, went to Walgreens, and the lady 
checked it, not with the regular pump, but she checked it with the, the regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to get y'all to get with the regular stethoscope. She said, <laughs> she said mm -hmm. yeah, she said, okay, Mr. Smith. She said, yeah, it's not at 150, but it's a little elevated, at 135. She said, I would suggest to you that you go to the doctor. Three, three, two, one. Hey, huh? I'm going to the doctor. She says, I'm coming. I said, no. Calm down a minute. I'm going to get there because I'm okay. Go to the doctor's office. Doctor sees me, puts his stethoscope on, and he says, hmm, Mr. Smith, um, your blood pressure is 70 over 110. He said, Come in, let me tell you something. You stop going <laughs> to all the wrong places. You stop going to the made up stuff and come to a real doctor. Come here for a moment. Many of us need to stop going to artificial places trying to get help, and we need to go to a real doctor so where we can truly be examined by the heart of God. Please. Don't allow ourselves to be touched 
we cease to exist being a church. When folks suffering, we ought to feel their pain. When folks got issues or problems, we ought to feel with them, know them, pray for them, and be along them with them so that healing can come from us to them. In other words, Jesus allowed himself to be touched and something went out of him. Something ought to go out from us when people are hurt. People are suffering. And they're bad. Now, may I make this political for you? And I'm done. See, the problem that many persons in the masses are having today with this critical race theory. Because no. I've been studying it, and I want to find out what this critical race theory really is. Because you hear a whole lot of problems with race theory coming from the masses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, the problem for them with the critical race theory of the policy, critical race theory is basically understanding that we, as a black people, people of color, have suffered social, economic, and all sorts of injustices over time. Based upon our skin color, where we live, and community. Some folks want to deny it. Say it didn't happen. And the reality is, it has. When you fail to acknowledge my existence, my past, and my history, you are denying who I am. So don't tell me when I walk in the room that you don't see color. Lie. I want you to see me as to who I am. I want you to recognize me being black, my struggle, and my pain. When you deny my existence, you deny who I am. Okay, I know you. Some of y'all might be different, but. Uh, and yes, the, 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 the new president of the Southern Baptist Convention says, well, we don't do, deal with critical race theory, things like that, but we deal with the Bible. The God said, love thy neighbor as I said. That's right. Love me as you love yourself. <laughs> Come on now. Love me as you love yourself. Love me as I am as you love yourself. Allow yourself to be touched and you feel my pain. And when I do that, guess what? I'll appreciate your struggle. And I won't deny your story. Then you won't take me out of schools. And you won't take me out of places. Because we recognize each other's pain and struggle in the whole process. I um, watched something the other day. He said, the problem is when um, the masses look in the real view mirror, they see opportunity. They see uh, at, uh, great education, great school. They see all these opportunities that are there for them, and they wonder why everybody else can't get it. Why? Because when I look at my real view mirror, all I see is oppression, segregation, dogs, fighting, dog, fighting, unable to get along, unable to get in colleges, unable to do those things. Yes, opportunities have been there, but they have not been equal all the way. Oh, is it memorex? <laughs> okay. 
He touched me and he made me whole. He touched me. He touched me. It's not difficult. 